to get home, babe. Come on, you knew this one was coming, right? At the bugger, you had to get home, right? The get home bag. You ever watch what people put in those things? I've never seen anything so funny in my life. Hand warmers. Gotta have hand warmers. Gotta put lots of uh, jerky and power bars and I'm just sitting there shaking my head. Let's understand what a get home bag is. Your vehicle is broke down along the highway and you need to get home because home is where everything is. This is where your food is, your guns, your ammo. This is where everything is. So you've got this goal of getting home. Thus, get home bag. So, get home bag is different for everybody, right? I mean, you take me. Like, everywhere I go is a minimum of a two-hour drive because of this little hick town I'm in. So, two-hour drive is usually about a 12 to 16-hour walk. So, I'm looking at about a two-day walk. You might as well stay on the safe side. And I'll even add an extra day. So say I got to walk three days. What do I need to carry in my so-called get home bag to get home? Do you think it's a camping trip? Do you think I'm going to be camping and saying, okay, light fires, we're going to roast some marshmallows? No, I'm going to get my butt home and I'm going to be moving. I'm going to try to walk at a very quick pace, within reason, not running. And I want to burn myself out and try to get my butt home. Now, if it was 96 degrees like it is right now here in Tennessee, I'm not going to do it during the daytime. I'm going to be huddled up in a river, cooling off, or I'm going to be under a tree during the, summer, during the daytime. But as soon as nighttime comes, I'm going to throw on this very tiny pack, and I'm going to go. But what am I going to carry in this pack? Water filter guaranteed. Guaranteed. Probably two water filters, so that way I know no matter what, I'm going to have water. Because mainly, that's all I need is water. I need to move quick. I know I'm going to be home within two to three days. All I need is water. I don't need food. Now, if I want to throw a couple snacks in, okay, great, gives me something to chew on. But, I mean, I don't need pots to fry things. I don't need MRE meals. I don't, I don't need anything. A knife? I don't even know what I'd use that for. Maybe for a bit of protection, but I always carry my handgun anyways. So I'd have the handgun, I'd have the knife, I'd have a water filter, and probably a canteen that I can hook onto my belt pretty quick. But there would be to consist of my whole get home bag. I would make sure I got a pair of good shoes in the vehicle. If winter time was coming, I'd make sure I got my winter coat in there. And a pair of boots. Depends on the season. But the odds of a get home bag ever being needed, when would I need that? If my vehicle breaks, I pick up the phone, I call a tow truck, they come pick me up, it takes it to a garage, the garage fixes it, and I drive it home. So... Only other time I've ever seen is if, I guess, if we get hit by the EMP. I've seen up in the north where they get into where a gridlock during the winter, and I've seen the highway shut down and people have to leave their vehicles. And then they pile into Walmarts and Home Depots and everything. They've always opened their doors and people go in there and wait until the storm passes. Once they get the roads open, they go and get their cars again. So when would you truly need a get-home bag? EMP? Because every other situation, you're normally calling a tow truck. So you don't need some crazy bag to get you home. And the odds of an EMP happening is, what, one in a million? I mean, when was the last EMP they had? It was 1940s? I mean, I don't know, 50s? I can't even remember. They had one. So unless the odds of that happening, that's pretty slim. It really is. What are some other reasons that your vehicle would be stranded and you have to grab your get home bag and go home? You got lost, you ran out of gas, you got to leave your vehicle. That, I don't, I wouldn't call that a get home. I would be calling that kind of stupid, which did. But if you did have to leave the vehicle, then maybe you want to have a few more things in that get home bag. But I'm going to be trucking it basically as quickly as I can. And I'm going to be doing it at nighttime when it cools off. Even right now, it's like 75, 80 degrees outside. It's horrible. If I had to go and do 20, 30 miles on that, oh, man, that wear me out. I might even have to take a day just to lay down and crash. And I got to tell you right now, a lot of people say, oh, what about the bugs, the mosquitoes? You walk for a good two days or a day, you just lay down on the ground and let the bugs feast on you. You're not even going to care. You're going to be so tired, you're going to be like, whatever, I'm just, that's it, I'm done. I'm finished. 
<laughs> and that's what's going to happen to you. But I guess basically you're just trying to pack things to make things more comfortable for yourself on your way home. But keep in mind, weight is the key. You really should keep it under 10 pounds, and water should be your number one concern. And, you know, having the proper things inside your vehicle for that situation occurs. Like a good pair of hiking runners, you know, or boots if it's wintertime, or a coat, or whatever weather you got to go in, which obviously changes through the year. But a get-home bag makes more sense to me than the so-called bug-out bag. Because the get-home bag, I think, has a much higher chance to being used than the actual bug out bag. What do you guys think? But there's a lot of videos on them. I mean, boy, you could make a, a hit movie on it. The bug out bag. I mean, you really could. Catch you guys later.